and it's time for Off the Press and the headlines on some of our national dailies. We'll begin with the headlines and after that we'll be joined by our very special guest, Upunabo Nkotare, political affairs analyst, joining us from River State to analyze some of these headlines. So let's begin with the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads with Tinubu takes oath as president. Nigerians demand quick action. Here you have the picture. This is actually the official picture now for the president-elect who will be sworn in today. And you have the writers there. President, a private sector demands blueprints on economy, fuel subsidy. Don't pity me. I asked for the job. I won't give excuses. President-elect. Tinubu worked hard to be elected president, says Buhari. And above the masthead, you have African presidents, U.S. Canadian delega delegations arrive for inauguration. Page two is where you see uh, details of that. And that's the much I'll be taking from the Punch newspaper. Uh, we move now to the Nation. The Nation newspaper is next. And uh, about the same headlines about the inauguration today. But we have world leaders uh, for Tinubu's inauguration. We have that one up there. 18 new 10 second term governors take oath today. We also have up there uh, annual coup, 339 eminent um, Nigerians get national awards. Reps concur with senators on CBN Act Amendment. Okay, so you can read that up uh, if you get it. It's on page three and four, the stories that I'm talking about. Uh, those are the headlines on The Nation. All right, from The Nation, we move to The Guardian newspaper. And The Guardian leads with cautious optimism as Tinubu offers hope to weary Nigerians. Page 6 is where you have details of that. You have pictures of the president-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, Climbing the stairs and one that shows his official uh, picture. Both Buhari's tenure ends, but not his rare economic footprints. Who is saying this? Go to page 21 and find out details of that. Buhari tenure ends, but not his rare economic footprints. Operators fault Nigeria airs launch without AOC registration number. Page 7 is where you have details of that. I apologize for my difficult choices that caused pains. That's Buhari telling Nigerians there. Uh, you find details of that on page 6 of the Guardian newspaper. That's it for the Guardian newspaper. We move to Nature News, uh, which will be like the final paper that we're looking at today. Nature News leads with the story, Climate Change. Stakeholders set agenda for Tinubu's government, and the writers are stop fuel subsidies, support private refineries, as according to additional, uh, encourage better commitment to Paris Agreement, climate change, that's from Wajubia, and make, dr make drive eco-friendly policies from NGOs. Um, electricity, Zungeru power plant begins supply of 700 megawatts to national grid. Okay, Zungeru power plant begins supply of 700 megawatts to the national grid. Environment minister tax new permanent secretary on achieving ministry's mandate. On page five, Nigeria's private sector greatly affected by high cost of electricity. Also on page five, and Buhari confers national honors on Nature News Advisory Board Chair. Um, those were the headlines on um, on the nature on nature news that we are uh, ready to take this morning. All right, so we have been joined by Opunabo Nkotaria, political affairs analyst from River State. As I told you earlier, good morning, Opunabo. So good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, and good morning, Nigeria. Um, Happy inauguration of an hour. Welcome, yeah, yeah, welcome to May 29th. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be a happy inauguration, but 
Thank God we've seen May 29th. Yes, yes. yes. Thank God indeed we have mm -hmm. seen it. With all the apprehensions and all the warnings and all the alerts, it's here finally. That have all been, yeah, that have all been suspended. <laughs> <laughs> Not eliminated, suspended. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Well, time let, will tell. Let, let time will tell. Indeed, open up, but time yeah. will tell. These are interesting times indeed for this country. Yeah. But let's right. dig in Quite straight. Interesting and intriguing. Yes. The Punch newspaper. Let's talk about the headline here. Tinubu takes oath as president. Nigerians demand quick action. Let's talk about quick that. Quick action on what? Quick action on what? On everything. On action everything. on appointments. Because I, I can tell you that most of uh, the people close to Tinubu are not talking of quick action on resolution of issues. They are talking of quick action in terms of appointment. They are hankering for positions and they want, they don't want what happened in rehash of the Guaris uh, administration where it took six months to appoint uh, his minister, or let's say his cabinet. What I cannot decipher is, if I am running for an executive position, let's say governor, um, president, I don't, I can't comprehend why it would take so, so long a time. I can't comprehend the dilatoriness in the appointment of my cabinet. Because in the course of the election, I already know those that will be appointed. I already know who will be my attorney general, who will be my commissioner for information, who will be my finance uh, minister. I already know. Then I might create room for maybe four or five other persons that will probably be nominated when I, be, when I get into office. So I, it tells you that most of our presidents are not prepared to run. They are not, I mean, they are not prepared to govern. It, they, 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 they don't believe that they might even win the elections. And so as far as they are concerned, the primary concern is winning the election. Then it is after the victory that you, they now sit down to say, okay, who do I am? That tells you how ill-prepared most of them are. Because if you have a vision, if you have a mission, you already have your team. Just like going into the race with a vice presidential candidate, you're running it. You already have a team because you say, for me to resolve most of these issues, I need Mr. A as my health minister. I know about him. He's sound. I will not sit down and say, uh, nominate somebody for me who will be my health minister. No. I should know who will be my health minister. Even if I don't know him personally, I must have done background check. Just like the way Ramson Kuti was appointed health minister. It came to him as a shock. But I did as a that I had done a background check. So this will be my finance minister. This is the man I'm going to appoint. Even if the man is not aware of it. Once you get into office, you say, call Mr. A, call Mr. B. My information minister, call Mr. C, call this. You discuss with them. Look, in the next two, three weeks, I'm going to appoint my cabinet. Are you willing to sign? If you say no, fine. I get another person. Then I might ask my other uh, um, friends to say, do you have anybody that can fit, uh, fit in? So I cannot comprehend the dilatoriness in the appointment. That tells you it's either the, uh, they are overwhelmed by the victory or ab initio they don't have an idea of what it takes to run the government. But do they and really have that? That is when they say the Tinubu should not delay. That is exactly what they are talking about. Uh, open they are not talking about policies. They are not talking about keep, uh, keep the ground running. That's not what they are talking about. So don't, don't be deceived. The way they, like they, they open up, just, just a moment. The way the political yes. sphere is wired in Nigeria, does the president elect really have the powers to just select the people that he wants? Or you're talking about just a few key positions that he can make personal choices? Now, now the issue is this. I understand what you're, what you're saying. You have loss of interest. And the appointment will be planned on your level of involvement, your relationship with the president, and so on. Now, there are some, let me say, complex situations where you have 
maybe five governors who supported you. Five who supported you and also ensured you met the tourists. So at that point, you're a little bit flustered. Who do I make this or who do I make this? It is simple. You've won the election. You've been sworn in. There is little or nothing those governors can do in whether serving or former. You invite them to a round table. My dear, you people, we are governors. In terms of appointment, you've had the experience. There is no way you all can be ministers. It's not possible. You wait. After two years, I'll appoint you. The first two years, let this man go. Because whether I like it or not, you will arrive at that same decision, no matter what time it takes. And, the, and governance, and you're sacrificing that at the earth altar of governance. Because you already, you've already made up your mind, even if you don't disclose your idea or what your intentions to anybody. The truth is you've made up your mind. If I'm going for governorship today in River State, I know who I'll appoint my commissioner for information, who will be my uh, commissioner for health. I already know. But the dynamics might change a little. Because probably once I declare my intention, certain persons that you are not in the picture might come into the picture and might be very useful. No problem. But once you come into the picture, I now know that at the end of the day, you must demand for something. You won't be prepared. Probably you gave me 20 billion naira, hypothetically. I know that this 20 billion naira is for nothing. You must want something. It's either I give you a contract to cover that, or I said to myself, let the Commissioner for Finance come from this man. So once I get the appointment, I say, do you want to be my Commissioner for Finance, or are you going to nominate somebody? Or you get a contract. You can't just shut up uh, 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 at the, at the, at the, at the sacrifice the governance at the altar of sentiments. You can call that sentiment. You should know who should be who. As they are coming, you already know that definitely they have interest. It's not an altruistic support. Yeah. We all know that. Openable. So you already know what to give to Mr. A or to Mr. B. Openable. Let's have your so thoughts. When they hit the ground running, they are not telling you uh, go, go ahead and start resolving the funding issues. When politicians say they are saying appoint your cabinet immediately so that we know. Let's have your thoughts. It's all negotiated. Let's have your thoughts. It's not altruistic. Openable. Yes. Let's have your thoughts on the president-elect, Ashwaji Bala Ahmed. He's been credited for having the um, ability, the smartness to, to always put a good thing together. Do you share that opinion? Well, I will not completely dismiss it when you consider the likes of Fashola and Co. I, I don't really know the cabinet. Or his, I didn't really know his cabinet. But let's just use Fashola. If you consider a man like him, I got the one out of the million. Oshimajo is one of them. But Oshimajo is very good. But, oh, that's a good first name, Oshimajo. But I can tell you this. It will be a fleeting illusion, my dear, to think that Bola Ahmed Tinubu is capable of hewing us out of this mountain of despair. I don't think so. Why do you say I don't that? think he has that ability to move on from the fatigue of this death to the buoyancy of hope. Why I say this? He has this patrimony syndrome. It is my own. It is my turn, which he said. So now that he's gotten it, he, he sees it as a right. Look at in Lagos. What happened in Lagos? Who can say he did this, he did that? No, the truth is. He formed his own voice. Even this M.C. Olumo. Bola Ahmed Tinubu will not be a respecter of the rule of law. He will not. And he will be, he will not digest dissent. Hmm. If you are vast to him, the goons around him will come after you. Like M.C. Olumo. That one is confirmed, so I can see. And you have a lot of them like that. Look at those in charge of the Lagos economy. His family, hmm. his family members, and those in charge of Lagos. Look at what his wife said during the election. You cannot come to Lagos as an evil man, make money, and then vote for another party. Rather, you leave Lagos. Too. And when she was asked by journalists during the election, if she's going to retract that, she said, no, she has no remorse. It was life.
She has no remorse. Look at what happened to the Igbos in Lagos. I'm not an Igbo man. I'm a reverse. But look at what happened to the Igbos in Lagos. Look at the shops that they bought. So that alone will tell you if you said he did this while he was a governor and he has abjured his sins, that's a different thing. But right in the last presidential election that he was allegedly declared winner. Look at what happened. So such a man will not brook dissension. And you can imagine if Lagos State is moved, which means the family members are the ones that are going to be in charge of the national level. When we falls on a loop and it doesn't wash up the steam, you don't know how to use, you don't learn how to use the left hand in old age. It is in it. And that is why I say I doubt if he's going to move off from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of him. I sincerely doubt. And I completely see the breakdown of law and order. And sadly, we have a judiciary that a cow with, I don't know, I, I, without spying, even with the last judgment, you are the Supreme Court who contradicted itself. In the case of uh, this Sharif, he said, you can if you are a participant in the election, query the eligibility of any candidate. In this one, he did a somersault. Even the Akpabio's case, even the Lawan's case. That's the Supreme Court. What a shame. Complete shame. While dismissing the suit. Mm. Bye -bye. Today is so it, you, know, you can imagine it, you can imagine a country where even the Supreme Court has engaged Supreme Courts have been caged. A lawyer went in court, came out and went in court, and said he doesn't think he's going to appear before the Lord Justice. Mm -hmm. Because this were this be a judgment given by the same Supreme Court. But because of interest. So I sincerely don't see you can you 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 look, take this to the back. In almost all the cases, in almost all the contracts, under Tinibu, you will see that his family is linked to it as a person. So it's like a fifth job. Okay, uh, let's 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 leave politics I, a bit. I, I doubt if we are going to if we'll be out of the woods of that <laughs> man. I sincerely uh, doubt. Okay, let's let's leave inauguration uh, um, aside for a bit. Uh, a lot of things have happened. Uh, one of them was that there was a promise that was given by the Ministry of Aviation, and they said that Nigeria Air will, will kick off. Now, Nigeria Air, we've seen uh, an airplane, even though people are still seeing the number of this airplane as having been taken from Ethiopia and painted shabbily and brought to Nigeria. But that's matter for another day. But operators fault Nigeria Air's launch without AOC uh, regulations uh, number. So it came without this regulation number or the approval of AOC. But it's Nigeria Air brought by the federal government and the operators are saying it's a no-no. What do you think? Of course, the Nigeria is a scam. They made all kinds of promises. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Okay, it's a scam. How, how, how would they get that the... the the number when the plane is does not the planes do not belong to Nigeria. It's not possible. We all know it's a scam. He was just trying to uh, deceive Nigerians, thinking, I mean, you can't deceive us. He wants to give an impression that uh is is a man of his words. He said before before now it was he said maybe before May 29th or something. So I have done it. But you see, they move more slowly, but by daybreak it has crossed the sky. You will see, with the turnout of events, that those planes are not ours. And I can tell you that if they are, because of how uh, avaricious 
Nigerians are. They want to grab the last minute grabbing. You saw all those kind of uh, budget approved on so last minute grabbing. If those places are actually ours, then they are scraps. You see that they are not ours or they are scraps. Just to deceive my neighbors. We don't have place. I will never fly that thing. God forbid it. But if I'm going to die, let me know where I'm going to die. And let me die unconsciously or knowingly, not intentionally. That is committing suicide. You want to fly that plane, you commit suicide. You know, we're tired of life. Just go and put that. If I call, they will still fly. Major concern. Those are not <laughs> and if they are ass, they are scraps. They are scraps, death traps. Open up. Allah, no Nigerian to fly. Tell the minister to fly the plane. <laughs> let him board that plane and fly. You Don't just that you bought planes and you did not fly. You want me to come and fly? You <laughs> just raised a major concern that people have about this this Nigerian airplanes that that we're talking yeah. about. Many Nigerians are saying, "Me fly." <laughs> Nigeria, eh? nah. And so you're expressing the same concern. So you have no confidence at all that it is safe to pl uh, to, to fly in those planes. Those things are kind of a life contraption. We bought them. We bought them. All. If they don't belong to Ethiopia, then we bought them. Then they are cannibalized contractors. Let the man fly now. Normally, when you bring them, you commit on the door. And you fly, you fly for Nigerian goods. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Even the trains, that is what they do. Even you buy cars, the governor will drive one to show you that they are the house. That is the car. Why didn't you fly? Let him fly first. All you would have done was prove. Go to Port Harcourt, go to this place, the plane is good. Call experts, they come, attest to. The the uh, um, uh, validity of uh, well, uh, how do they call it again of that plane? You did just brought them bam and you, you said you're going the following day. They knew what they were doing, so that they will transfer the blame whatever whatever comes up, to the incoming gov uh, governor. Uh, gov sorry, president. And the president, of course, I know who Bola is, is 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 he doesn't hide his feelings. If they call, he will tell them the boss crap. After all, when he came to River State here. Yeah, we can insinuated that he assisted them. What did he tell you? He said, I owe you nothing. <laughs> yeah. So that the world would also hear that you did, you played no role. If you think we don't without you, I would have won. That's the, whole, that's the meaning of I owe you nothing. Love it like others. In other words, we don't without you, I would have won. Mm. Okay, let's. So I can tell you that those planes, if they are actually asked, purchased by Nigeria. A cannibalized contraction. Don't bother them. Don't bother them. First of all, tell the minister to fly from those places. Mm, let him fly and come back. Then, okay, I will apologize publicly. But I don't think those planes are ours. If they are, because even when you look at the plane, you know, it's like a 1942 vehicle that you're trying to make new using uh, uh, auto bay. Hello, open up. Just frozen there. Yeah, the network perhaps because it's about to rain. Mm -hmm. We can hear the rain falling. But open up if you can join us um, again, please do so so that we can continue with this uh, newspaper analysis on off the press. They were just saying there that nobody should uh, fly in the Nigerian air that Would uh, you Heidi fly? Sirica has uh, brought in. Um, would I fly? Yeah, would you fly, Nigeria? No. It's, it's a terrible thing, what, what our leaders think we are. It's like uh, Nollywood before now, uh, that you watch some movies and you feel that they think we do not understand what is going on there, a storyline and whatever they're doing. Uh, but now, you go to cross the yeah, You froze. You just froze. Connectivity huh? problem. Sorry. But let's continue from sure? where you stopped. Let's yeah. just continue so yeah, that we can sure. wrap up. We have yeah. like four so minutes. You were saying that Nigerians should not fly that air, uh, Nigerian air that uh, Hadi Sirika brought in. Yes, yes, we, can. yes we, can. we can. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. Categorically, one of you locally, that is what I am saying. That the plane either belongs to Ethiopia or is a cannibalized contractor. However, if he wants to prove us wrong, let him board, let him fly those things. 
let him fly. If you look at the plane, how well the appearance, you could see that it was hardly painted. You know, so if the appearance is like that, the, I'll, I'll just try to come, but because I will not even enter to look at the inside. For me to enter, I have to pay for my ticket to fly. Mm. But when I pay for my ticket to fly and I'm going and it's so, my death, I have to die. Let me know why and how I'm going to die. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. This let me not go and commit suicide. I don't want to go and commit suicide. Mm. So let him fly the plane. He's going to be the minister for the mm. Fly now. <laughs> Some some have said that fuel can finish mid air. Fly the plane. Fly to Lake Potakot. Fly to Kano. Fly to Then go to London and back. You know this is quite unfortunate. This is yeah, open up all. So if I die, it's an accident. Not going to commit suicide. This is quite unfortunate that, you know, in spite of all the money spent on this project, that this is where it has come to. I mean, right from the get-go, there were issues about how much it's was like spent. Spent, spent. In spite of all the money mm. and that's all we using the war. We can't do that. Well, we don't know for sure. We, we don't know for sure whether it's been embezzled or not. Let's just take them by their words. But, um, okay, well, let's say... No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you're still sorry. 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 Do a rebuttal, do a rebuttal, no problem. But yeah. open up a set, not, not more than... Yeah, not, take it easy. Not, uh, new central, uh, sorry, um, uh, Plus TV. No, no, open up a set, open up a set. We brought it on the eve of uh, uh, the uh, um, transition. Hand over. So that you quickly run out. Okay. Then the play will now go to the. Of course, you are you are one ten and five and ten and six. Okay. Let let's just one. let's just take another knows, issue. You know my brain boy. Let's take another issue. Uh, maybe this one yeah. you will you will agree or you will be happy with it. Uh, we've been told that the mm -hmm. Zungeru power plant has begun the supply of seven hundred megawatts to the. Uh, national grid, 700 megawatts uh, to the national grid. Mm. Uh, should we be clapping for yeah. that sector of the, our economy? Should we, <laughs> should we be clapping for the power sector or not? Yes, exactly. How has it affected you? Mm. We keep talking of pol policies, we always found in the morass of policy. How the GDP is this? How, how has it affected you? Are you going to go to the market to tell the market woman that? Will you go and tell the tailor what that? How has it affected you? That is the issue. Most times they do all these things because in the process they make money. They make money. Look at the Siemens project, Saga. How has it affected you? Did you have constant power supply? Or has the power supply improved? That is the question. I'm not interested in what you do behind the scenes, but I elected you to, be, to do that. It's like coming to a uh, customer that you come back, you call the world to come and see that you're, mm. what was your job? What were you elected to do? Exactly. What were you elected to do that I have to commend you? The money is the money you own. The money is my own. That's the money. So why should I come and tell you thank you for doing it? You should be ashamed of yourself if you don't do it. Then you waste our phones again. Every day you call the station. I know this one, you don't like this one because it's affect. You call stations to come and cover. Then you pay 10 million, 15 million that I would have used to do another food. You were elected to do the tax. So why should I tell you thank you? Why? The power project, has it affected you positively? That is the question. That is the question. So don't tell me you don't you uh, uh, now, well, the problem is transmission. We've been able to generate this now without to do with transmission. All kinds of gibberish. I need power in my house and I'm going to pay for it. Simple. Simple. Give me power and I pay for it. So far, you generated this. The problem is transmission. Will God do the transmission? All Will right. God do it? Okay. Is it not the same government that will do transmission? Open up. Uh, let's take a yes. look at uh, one of the headlines. Uh, on the nation newspaper uh, reps concur with senators on cbn act amendment yes <laughs> you see 
even at the last minute, at the last minute. they want to do that amendment because they have just realized what happened when uh, during the uh, Naira confiscation, not Naira swap. Now it has affected everybody. So they quickly passed that. It is good because it's going to be in the interest of Nigerians. I completely agree with that amendment. I completely agree with it. Because in the interest of Nigerians. And, uh, um, you know, reps or the National Assembly focus on things that will uh, be beneficial to them, not necessarily the nation. Observe, whenever they come up with bills, it is because it's affecting, including the members of the community. Not because they love you. No, if it's not affected the common man, no. It's not because they love you. It's because it's affecting them as well. So they came up with an amendment, and I completely agree with that amendment. I agree. Mm. Uh, well, at least you have agreed with one of the things here we're talking about today, and it will be a very yeah. good way to end our discussion on the headlines this I morning. I know that you're going to end it on this note. I know, <laughs> I know that you end it on this note. note. Yeah, we, we like positivity. <laughs> we like it. On a positive Opu, note. Opunaba. You know, Opunaba, when we listen to some of these analyses, and they are most times quite accurate, they they, they they make one feel like there is no hope. But we know that there is hope. Mm -hmm. We are hopeful uh, for a better Nigeria, especially as we begin to go into a new dispensation. Do you have hope of a better Nigeria? Yeah. Okay, Just now. round off you, please. Okay. Our, our dreams are shattered. And promise of a better future ship rests. Have I answered you? Well, you have tried. Thank you so much. Okay, I would just have to no say that. Mm. You know, hope unless God intervenes. Otherwise, the future is bleak with Bola Ahmed Tinebu and his cohorts. Well, thank you, Opunabo. Mm. Opunabo. God will intervene. Because we are Israelites. We are Israelites. He will lead us through the Red Sea. Mm. We are already there at the brink. God will lead us to the Red Sea. Amen. Thank you, Opunabo, for you. your time today mm -hmm. on Mindset Monday Thank on you. The Breakfast. Opunabo Nkotaria, political affairs analyst, joined us from River State on Of The Press to take a look at some of the headlines on some of the national dailies that we looked at this morning on The Breakfast. We'll be back with the weather report. Stay with us. <laughs>